Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Indie Fanboy Podcast. I'm Walt Frazier. We're talking X-Files Season 11. Da, 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 da. Significant talks underway with David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. Holy moly for Season 11. Now, most of you know I'm a huge X-Files fan. I have been with the show since day one in 1993. People have really not liked how I compare it to Star Wars, but I have to go into a little explanation here as I go into this little podcast. Here are the reasons why I compare Star Wars and X-Files to each other. I think both projects were big parts of my life at different times, and in the past year, within months of each other, made a huge comeback, and the biggest difference is I think these projects, well, the biggest similarity, these projects are headed by absolute geniuses that are the biggest pro and sometimes the biggest con, if you understand what I'm saying. Both George Lucas and Chris Carter are the geniuses behind these projects, but when they don't team up, when they do too much by themselves, sometimes, I don't know if it's over-conceptualization, yada, yada, they often ruin their own projects and maybe they're overthinking things. Whenever they team up with a co-writer, a director, a what some other person in the planning process to help them bounce ideas off of, they hit a home run. I love the first episode. Until, of course, there are a couple dialogues and there are moments here and there, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to basically, in this podcast, go back over five things Chris Carter and Fox need to do to deliver a better season 11 that I think they didn't do in season 10. Number five, it's 2016. It's not 1993. Post Breaking Bad, post Sopranos, post all these so many shows that have been out there doing the six to 12 season episode or episode season arc. We expect a six episode arc. If you're going to do six episodes, they need to be tied together more. It's a more compelling, dramatic storytelling format. You have the ability now to do this, and Fox will do it. These six episodes, even if you're going to have the Monster of the Week episodes, they need to tie together somehow a little bit more, right? They need to flow. The best episode clearly was the Wear Wizard. You know, Reese Darby is now my my hero. Geniusly written, geniusly performed, geniusly directed. Absolutely freaking amazing, right? You can't say that about all the episodes. They need a single showrunner that looks at all six scripts, and I don't think that should be Chris Carter. That needs to be somebody else. You can bring in somebody new. You can bring in a director for the whole series. You can do something, but don't do the 1990s formula. They need to tie together. We need to have, okay, there's a beginning and a middle and end in every episode, so it's somewhat episodic just to make Chris feel like, you know, it's still the 90s, but a beginning, a middle, and an end for the season as a whole this whole thing oh let's just flip episode two and four you should never be able to do that if it's written the way i'm suggesting you write it look at the whole season don't be writing episode five while you're shooting episode one map out the whole season you can always make changes right okay well let make changes rewrite I, i think episode five needs about 10 more rewrites before it's ready to shoot so speaking of that number four It's 2016, not 1993. Same title, different reason. Okay, Babylon. We are post-Homeland at this point. Bring back all the guys that made all those wonderful cop dramas for you before, right? We need to not have two-dimensional Muslim characters. I mean, I, I, some people are out there calling it racist. I don't know about if it was that. I think it was just shallow. And again, it was a 1990s handling of terrorism. Let's bring Howard and Alex back. If you're going to do a terrorist episode, I think they would have fixed this. Again, it's 2016. It's not 1993. You can't just have these two-dimensional uh, Islamic characters. But let's look at that whole episode. That Babylon episode, uh, the dance was fun. Uh, Clearly, this was two separate episodes crammed into one. It didn't know what it wanted to be. As David always talked about, there are three different Mulders and Scullies. There's the comedies, there's the dramas, and then there's separate, the mythology. There's there's almost three separate Mulder and Scullies, and we got at least two of them in this one. Not together, of course, because they were with their doppelgangers and some weird matchups. That's a whole other issue, but we'll get to that. No problem. It should have been two separate episodes and all that stuff. It's almost like, oh, 
we have like five extra minutes. Let's just have Mulder and Scully walking through the field and looking up and hearing the trumpets of... Yeah, we didn't need all that. You could have taken that extra five minutes and written a real script. Other, all right, number three, more Mitch Pileggi. Mitch Pileggi. Walter Skinner is now in the credits. Mitch Pileggi, as Walter Skinner, has his badge in the opening credits. Why the fuck did we see him for, what, maybe five minutes in all six episodes combined? Maybe ten? Maybe I'm being a little harsh. What is going on there? It should have been Walter Skinner saving Mulder at the end of episode six, My Struggle 2. We love Walter Skinner. He has to walk that fine line. He's a, he wants to have a job. He's a, you know, a country man. He's a former military man. He's a guy who follows orders. But at the same time, at the end of the day, he does what is right and saves the day every single time. So we need to see more Mitch Pileggi. We, we love those moments in Walter Skinner's office. We love it when Walter Skinner's on location saying, you know, he's the anchor. If nothing else, he is the anchor. He is the tiebreaker. He is the one that is there to back Scully up when Mulder is off the deep end. You know, he's the one there, you know, to really anchor the team. Going on to number two, leave Mulder and Scully alone. How many people, if you listen to this, how many people, you're watching episode five, Babylon, all of a sudden we see the young doppelgangers pop in, the young Mulder, the young Scully, right? Miller and Einstein. I love both the actors. They did a good job for what they were given to do. Robbie Amell is actually a really, really phenomenal actor. And boy, did they write him dull. Forget about all of that. The bigger point is, don't fuck with Mulder and Scully. I'm sorry, I went there. I'm going, don't fuck with with Mulder and Scully. X-Files is David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson with Mitch Pileggi as Mulder, Scully, and Skinner. That is the X-Files. I'm sorry. Anything else, you will lose all of us. You lost a lot of us in season eight and nine. You strung us along by putting David in there just enough. It isn't so much David or Jillian, it's David and Jillian. I think the same thing would have happened if for some reason Jillian Anderson pulled out of season eight and nine the way David did. I think the same thing would have happened. We all would have been like, eh. I think every single one of us that's a true fan has seen every single episode, season one through seven. I've been saying ever since 2008, what they need to do is a six to eight season arc. I think it was genius that came back, but you gotta do it the right way. You gotta leave. Mulder and Scully the fuck alone. I hope you're listening, Chris. I know you get it. Mulder and Scully can be together, not be together. I think where they are right now is a very good place. Um, they don't have to be together all the time. They clearly care about each other. They love each other. I, the tension created by pulling them apart I thought was genius. All the people are cursing you out for that. That's not who I am. But leave them the fuck alone. Chris Carter needs to never direct or write alone again. That's number one. I would say the same thing. I think I'm not alone in this. George Lucas had a co-writer and a co-director for Empire Strikes Back, and it's clearly the best of the first six. The best episodes this past season. Clearly the where Blizzard really loved Founder's Mutation. Enjoyed My Struggle, My Struggle 2. I'm still on the fence with that fourth one, Band-Aid Nose Man. Maybe because I was expecting a home sequel, right? We were all expecting those guys, the inbred crazy world. But Home Again was interesting. I liked it, though, though it did feel like a really true X-Files episode that we liked. But again, we only have six so we really want them all to be perfect. When you have 20 to 24 episodes and you fuck up a couple, we're very forgiving. We're very forgiving of the old fuck-ups. You only get six now. Maybe you get one or two more in 2018. But number one is Chris Carter needs a babysitter, I think. I think somebody from Fox or maybe just David or somebody needs to say, Chris, what are you doing over there? You're, wait, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're over there writing by yourself. No, 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 no. You need somebody with you at all times. You need like a buddy system or something. You need something. You need Darren, Vince, Frank, Howard, James, Glenn, David. Where, where are the David Duchovny episodes? So here's, here's my subscription, what I think what needs to happen. It needs to be an anthology type thing that has more tied together than the old style anthology in some way or another. They need to be one cohesive, coherent season 
arc that needs to come together. I think every single episode from this season 10 had room for improvement. And I know you're more than capable. We've seen it. There's a reason why you have this, as David calls, as loyal as fuck following. It's those first five seasons and that first movie. Everything else since has been pretty good. Hey, do me a favor. If you if you agree with me, comment wherever this is posted. If you don't agree with me, troll the shit out of me. I don't care because I want to know. I mean, how 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 far off base am I? Am I on, am I on target? Do you think I'm right? Where am I right? Where am I wrong? Not for my sake, for their sake. Because I think as a team, we brought this show back. As everyone has said, we brought this show back, the fans, as a team, through social media and going to the cons and demanding every time, when is season 10 coming? When's a new movie coming? I will be the first one to say I prefer six episodes to a movie. Same budget. We get six hours of content versus an hour and a half or two hours of content. Much cheaper. The contracts are cheaper. Uh, what I know as a SAG actor myself, I understand it. If I was an actor and your employee, I'd much rather do the movie, get a lot more money for day of work. But I am so on board with six more episodes. Do six. Don't even try to do eight. Don't blow it. Don't don't try to do too much. Take six, but just put a little more love into them. Put a little more heart. Put a little more thought. You guys could do it. I know you can. I think you can. No, I know you can. I know you can. Hey, guys, this is Andy Fanboy. I'm Walt Fraser. We are out. Come check us out in Times Square. I am part of the 8 is Never Enough Improv Comedy Troupe at LMAO. Go to my website, waltfraser.com. Check out my other TV credits. And uh, follow me on Twitter, at Walt Fraser. W-A-L-T-F-R-A-S-I-E-R. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.